Grace and peace in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the Bible Speaks. My name is Brother Stephan. Reading today for me is Brother Fajel. Today's lesson is entitled The Power of God and the Holy Ghost. The Power of God and the Holy Ghost. Most people who read the Bible, unless they are led by the Holy Ghost, they don't understand the Holy Ghost. Ghost is just a slang word for spirit, and spirit comes in many forms. We're going to look at the form of the Holy Ghost that endows us with the actual power of God, supernatural power, actually. And we know that also that the Holy Ghost is also called the Comforter, which leads and guides you into all truth. But we're going to look at a facet of it, uh, the power of God. And we're going to start reading at verse 24, uh, Luke 24, verse 48. And this power that is given uh, disciples or followers of God is meant to bring us all into the unification, into one body. And we're going to see this. Luke 24 at verse 48. Would you read, sir? And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endowed with power from on high. So now Jesus is giving his last message to his disciples before his uh, ascension uh, later on. He told them to tarry at Jerusalem. Is that what he told them? He said, ye are witnesses of these things. What witnesses? Witnesses of all the things that he had did during his ministry because they followed him for three and a half years. So he was saying, you saw what I did. And behold, I send you the promise of my father upon you. He said, he told him to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be what? Endued with power from on high. Now we're going to take a look at this power that Jesus is going to endue his, endow his disciples with. Let us go, first of all, let's see who God gives this power to. We're going to St. John, the first chapter. We're just going to pick this up at the 12th verse. St. John, the first chapter. And we're going to pick this up at the 12th verse. Let's see who God gives this power to. Would you go ahead and read, sir? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So now we see here that the power can only come to you by receiving God. He said, for as many as received him. Right? Mm. Does anybody to them gave he what power to become the sons of God, even to them what that believe on his name. Now we're going to go to Acts the first chapter here, because where he told them to wait for this power. Acts eight. I'm sorry. Acts one, and we just want one verse out of there. Acts one and verse eight. Acts one and verse eight. Would you read it, sir? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So once again, we're looking at this power that is going to come by way of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And we're going to take a look at the facet of this power and what it does and what we are supposed to be able to do with it. Uh, let us go to Acts the fourth chapter, sir, and pick it up at verse 26. Acts the fourth chapter and verse 26. When you get there, sir, would you read it? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For the truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Go ahead, sir. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Go ahead. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may, they may speak thy word. Now, because it says, you have to understand, at this particular time, uh, you had to have some boldness to speak the word, because this was a doctrine that was was very controversial. Christianity was very new, and it was very opposed mm -hmm. by a lot of the religious sect that existed during that day, particularly the scribes and, uh, and Pharisees. So the, the prayer is, he said, the 29, and now, Lord, behold, uh, he said, they are threatening us, but we want you to grant us 
all boldness that we may speak this word. Keep continue, sir. Verse 30. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. So he said, to stretch forth thy hand to heal. So we know Jesus is, is long gone now, but we see that this power to stretch forth your hands to heal is supposed to be within the disciples. Or those that uh, have received God, they received this power. Continue, sir, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Mm -hmm. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. So we see here that when they, that one uh, residual uh, uh, is speaking this word with boldness and confidence once you receive this Holy Ghost. We're going to show you before they, before they received it, they were not speaking this word with confidence. In mm -hmm. fact, we're going to show you that they flat out denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. But continue, sir. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they all, but they had all things common. So we see here that as a result of this, the whole multitude that believed were all of one soul. Because we're going to show you through this word of God that the sole purpose of the power of God by this particular uh, derivative of the Holy Ghost is to unite the whole body of those that believe. Continue, sir. Verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So by, it was done by the power of the demonstrative preaching of the word of God with the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's continue. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, sir. 2 Corinthians 11, and we're going to pick this up at verse 3. When you get there, read. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So uh, Paul was speaking to these Corinthians, and he had a concern. He had a, actually a fear that they would be corrupted by false doctrine. And what did he say? Verse 4, please. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with He's him. He's basically telling, warning these Corinthians of false doctrine, mm -hmm. and that of, of another Jesus by another spirit, which is a false spirit, mm -hmm. right? Which is a false spirit, which is not the Holy Spirit. And he said, you might b bear with him, but it might means you might not also, depending upon how you have girded the loins of your mind with this gospel. Let us continue. Let's go to Luke 11 and... Uh, I'm, uh, first Corinthians, mm -hmm. yeah, First Corinthians four, mm -hmm. and pick this up at verse one. First Corinthians four, and pick it up at verse one. When you get there, sir, would you read? Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So we're not our own ministers, right? We're the ministers of Christ. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, sir. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Go ahead, sir. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Paul is saying that the judgment is really not a prerogative given to man because God is the only judge. Paul said he is not even judging himself, but he's going to make it clear that whatever it is that he has received, he didn't receive it from within. He received it from God. Continue, sir. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the so Lord. So Paul is saying that whatever it is that I'm writing to you in this letter, I don't know it by myself. I didn't manufacture it. Continue, sir. Therefore judge nothing before the time. So he's telling these Corinthians, judge nothing before the time. Because sometimes we make judgment based upon the sight of our eyes. And sometimes what we hear, we make a judgment, which is not wise. Which is not the Spirit of God also. Continue, sir. Until the Lord come. Until the Lord come. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. So he's just letting you the judgment is forbidden. He's telling these Corinthians. Continue, sir. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one 
of you be puffed up for one against another. So this Holy Ghost or this wisdom of God or this discernment and this power, Paul is saying, yes, I have it. I know I'm having it. I do have it. And I know I'm justified of God. However, it is nothing that I have received uh, that I that I manufactured myself and that you should n- learn of us not to think of men above what you should. And sometimes we have a, a tendency to do that by not understanding that whatever it is that you have received, you have received it for God. He said no, that no one of you be puffed up one against another. Go ahead, sir, continue. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not? So they, it? we know that the gifts of the of the of the spirit differ. But whatever your gift is, it is from God. Mm. So you did not uh, uh, get it or make it up yourself. So why do you glory, or why do you put other men on on pedestals as if they are more than they ought to be? Mm. Continue, sir. Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. Go ahead, sir. For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. So because you have to understand, along with this power that's given to you is going to become great suffering also, because the Lord say, hey, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, many. And through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. So he's telling these Corinthians, he said, For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as we were what? We have an appointment with death. Continue, sir. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. And that's something he says, so we are made a spectacle. People are laughing at us. People are making jokes. They, they, they uh, jeer us. For preaching this word of God. We are defamed. Continue, sir. We are fools for Christ's sake. Uh-huh. But ye are wise in Christ. Uh-huh. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. And this is how the world sees Christians even to this day. Mm-hmm. They are defamed. They are looked upon as fools. And they are uh, uh, have the appearance of being weak. Continue, sir. Verse 11. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. So, but even though they had this power, you see that they also had this tribulation that went along with this duty, with this enlistment, with this covenant that they entered into with the Lord by the blood of Jesus. They are hungry, thirsty, and naked, and above it, and have no certain dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Continue, sir. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer. Go ahead, sir. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world. And are the offscouring of all things unto this day. So he is letting these Corinthians know basically what they are about to get into. Mm-hmm. They are being converted. Mm-hmm. And if you think that the world is going to embrace you, no, they won't. And even if you preach the true word of God in a world that totally lies in wickedness, you will experience the same thing. Yeah. This is not the kingdom of God. This is a world that is being run by Satan, the devil. And any time that you make yourself right, righteous in a world that is totally opposite, you will experience the residual effect. Continue, sir. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn so you. So basically, he is basically being a spiritual, spiritual father to him. I'm not writing these things for you to be ashamed of. Uh, I'm writing these things to you to warn you that when you follow these steps of this belief, that you should expect the very same things. And this is what he's basically telling us too, mm-hmm. people. Yeah, it's always good and pleasant to dwell with brothers together in unity. Yes, because we all have the same spirit. But once you get out and start getting in the world and start to doing the work of this ministry and you see how the world is contrary to the word of God, you will find yourself very sorrowful. Very, very sorrowful. Let us take it a step further. Let's go to Luke 11. Pick it up at verse 9. Luke 11, and we're going to pick this up at verse 9. Looking at this, the power of God and this Holy Ghost. Go ahead, sir. 
And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Mm -hmm. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto Go you. Go ahead. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. So this is the threefold promise that the Lord is telling you. Ask, seek, right, and knock, right, to everyone that asketh, right? So some people want to use this as to, to get material things, but this is not what God is talking about. Continue, sir. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, mm -hmm. will he give him a stone? Of course not. Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Go ahead, sir. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask so him? So it's not about material things that he's telling you to ask about. It is about the Holy Spirit that he's telling you to ask because it's only with the Holy Spirit which is going to give you the power of God so that you can do the things that are necessary to convert people to the gospel for a unified body. This is what this whole thing is about. It's to the unity of Christ, which is what we're going to see. But he's telling you that you got to ask, but we got to ask in faith also and also meet the conditions we see. Just because you ask, doesn't mean you're going to, we're going to see that you got to ask first of all, and you got to believe for everyone to ask it. But let's go to 1 John. 1 John, the third chapter, verse 17. 1 John 3, verse 17, sir. Is that, yes, yes. go ahead. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? That is something to think about. Go ahead, sir. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So basically he's telling us not to have a neglect of mercy toward our brother. That's all this is. Because how there is the love of God in you if you do? Go ahead, sir. And hereby we know that we are of the truth. And shall assure our hearts before him. Because we want to assure our hearts before him, all our minds. When we pray to God, we want to make sure that God hears, it, hears our prayer. Right? But he's letting you know how to and make sure that that prayer gets through. Every time. Go ahead, sir. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So he's letting you know that if your mind condemn you, God is greater than your mind and he knoweth all things. Because, see, it is your obedience that is going to lead you to the confidence so that you can ask him, because the Lord wants you to come boldly before the throne. But if your heart condemns you, you can't come boldly. Right. Because there's something condemning you. Continue. Go ahead, sir. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward but God. But now we got that, that holy boldness again, right? That he wants us to have. So that we can speak the word not only with both. Because sometimes if your heart condemns you, you don't even want to preach the gospel. You don't even want to pray. Because you spiritually, spiritually limping or spiritually have fallen in your mind, so therefore your prayer is not in earnest when you fall down or you don't want to read because you feel guilty because your heart is not the way it should be. And that's Satan's biggest tool, too, guilt. Because whatever guilt you have, it's going to stop you from coming to God. Where else are you going to go anyway? Acknowledge your sin and, and do what you need to do to, do to clean yourself up. Continue, sir. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, uh -huh. because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his so, sight. But if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence for God, right? And whatsoever we ask, now because we got that confidence, right? Mm -hmm. We got that boldness, right? We will receive him, what? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Read verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and love one another as he gave us commandment. So that's, it's, it's simply, the Ten Commandments are simply embodied in just loving your neighbor like you love yourself and loving your God with all your heart and soul, so that you may receive this power. We're going to take a, still take a look at this power of the Holy Ghost that comes as a result of you receiving God, keeping his commandments, and loving your brother. 
and not having a heart that is condemned so that you can ask in boldness. Let's go a step further. Let us go to Luke 22. I just want the, the 42nd verse. Because so whatsoever we ask, we shall receive. Let's go show you that that's only with conditions. Because we're going to show you Jesus asked for something and he didn't receive it. Luke 22, 42. Luke 22 and 42. When you get there, read, sir. Same. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Isn't that something? So he said, Father, if thou be willing, what did he say? Remove this cup from me. He's talking about the cup, but Jesus did not want to die, people. Right. He did not want to die. So anybody that said, yeah, well, I'll die, you know, you, you just, you're just talking. That the spirit is willing, but the flesh is very weak. I don't care who you are. OK, you might want to say Jesus, who he came into the world to die at the hour that he was supposed to die. In fact, the night of he wanted to punk out of that thing. He did not want to do it. He was exceedingly sorrowful, crying. One time like a two year old crying. And his disciples had never seen him like that. Because they'd been walking around with him for three and a half years, you know, doing all the miracles and all the power. And they saw him like this. It shook their faith to the point that they all left him that night. Mm -hmm. So he, this, this is one thing that Jesus asked for, right? But the Lord did not give this to him, right? So we see that you, you got to ask for things that are according to the will of God. Because this was not according to the will of God. Because for this very reason, he was sent into the world. Matthew 3, verse 13 through 17. Matthew 3, verse 13 through 17. When you get there, so would you read? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John mm -hmm. to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Mm -hmm. And comest thou to me? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, uh -huh. for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh -huh. Then he suffered him. Go ahead, so to fulfill what? How much righteousness? So the baptism is, is, is a symbolic of fulfilling all righteousness. It's something that you got to do, people. Continue, sir. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Uh -huh. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we say, Jesus, when he came up out of the water, he was baptized and went up straightway out of the water. And lo, what? Heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Right? Mm hmm Let's see if we're going because this is, this is some mysterious stuff right here. It seems to be, but it's really not. We're going to see. Let's see through the word of God. What was it that lit upon Jesus? Let's see what that spirit was, because it's the same spirit that lights upon you. It's not nothing spookery or mysterious. Let's go look at Isaiah 11 and pick it up at verse one through four. Isaiah 11 and verse one. Through four. When you get there, sir, read it, sir. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh. and a branch shall grow up out of his root. Uh -huh. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon sounds him. Sounds like the Spirit of the Lord. This sounds like the same thing that rested upon Jesus, right? Let's see what it is. Go ahead, sir. The Spirit of wisdom. Also, and it's the Spirit of wisdom. Go ahead. And understanding. Oh, it's the Spirit of understanding. So it's not that, that spookery now, right? Because that's one of the things that the Holy Ghost does. It leads and guides you into all truth. So this, even though Jesus was full of the, of the uh, 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 was full, uh, uh, that was, you can add none to him, but it is, he says, suffer it so that all righteousness to be fulfilled. But we're, it's, we're showing you what is supposed to come upon you when you receive the Holy Ghost, this facet of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of counsel and might. That might is by the power of God because you got to lay hands on the sick and, and heal, right? Mm -hmm. That's the Bible. We're looking at all these things. Go ahead, sir. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge. Go ahead. And of the fear of the Lord. And of the fear of the Lord. So it's not that this is what lit upon him. And this is what lights upon all of us that uh, uh, who received the Holy Ghost, right? That this is the power of God. 
right, that is given to all those that receive him. Did you finish? Verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his, that's, of his ears. That's why Paul was telling you in that Corinthians, telling those Corinthians not to judge a matter before the time. He was telling them this because he had that spirit. All right? And all the disciples that obey uh, the Lord can have accessibility to the spirit. But it is really spirit, uh, spiritual discernment. It's the fear of the Lord. It's the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom. This is the spirit mm -hmm. that you are anointed with. This is not nothing that comes in. You make you jump up and down and, and, and fall on the floor. What he said, he is going to make him of quick understand. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither shall he reprove after his Let's look at the same spirit, the same exact spirit on the apostle Peter. Let's go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Acts 5. And pick it up at verse 1, please. Acts 5, verse 1 to 3. When you get there, sir, would you read, sir? But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession uh -huh. and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' so feet. So it was the offerings that they had that they were supposed to offer, but some of these offerings that they were supposed to offer was, was, was withheld. Go ahead, sir. But Peter said, Ananias... Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price no, Peter, of the land? He wasn't there, though, right? right? But this is that he didn't have to judge after the sight of his eyes, neither did he have to hear. This is the same exact spirit. Peter judged not out the sight of his eyes. Skip down to verse 7, sir. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Go ahead, sir. And she said, Yea, for so much. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Uh-uh-uh. Go ahead. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. So we see here that Peter had the same spirit of discernment, right? Not only did he have the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, but he didn't have to judge after the sight of his eyes. He said, what, why you have tempted what? The spirit of the Lord. Here at the third verse, he said, but Peter, uh, Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to what? The Holy Ghost. Because he was endued with it. He was endowed with it, people. So he had it. That's how come this is the same spirit that lights upon us if we receive the Lord. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of discernment. The Lord will show it to you. And he was telling the Corinthians, Paul, do not judge a matter before the time. Let's go a step further. Let's go, let's go to Acts, the third chapter, and now pick it up at verse 11, please. Acts 3 and verse 11. Go ahead, sir. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Uh -huh. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? See, Peter is saying that this is no power in, in man. This is why you're looking at us. That like, like, like it's, the, it's our power. We've been preaching this gospel to you and you should understand that it, no power is in man. Peter is disclaiming personal power for doing this. He is separating himself. He is glorifying God, and, but, it, but it's by the power of God by which he is doing this. Now, let, let's look, let's, we're going to take a look at Peter before he had this type of boldness. Let's go a step further. Let us go to Mark, the 14th chapter, and pick it up verse 62. Mark 14 and verse 62, sir. When you get there, would you read? And Jesus said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Uh -huh. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need ye any further witness? Uh -huh. Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? 
And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Now, so Jesus said, you know, he said, I am. Jesus had this boldness even unto death. So, because before, you know, he was scared. But mm -hmm. as when he got before the magistrates and the high priests, the Lord gave him a mouth, a mouth speaking that neither his adversaries could gainsay or resist. Because the Lord tells you, hey, don't take no thought for what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start speaking through you. Because he was... You know, and any other normal person would have been shook up, but the Lord was speaking very boldly mm -hmm. when his divinity was challenged. Continue, sir. And some began to spit on him and cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their now hands. Now you have to understand, the disciples who walked around him with, walked around with him for three and a half years were witnessing this. They had never seen Christ being humiliated like this. Because, you know, he was going through the, the temple, throwing tables over and walking through people when they wanted to stone him. Many times he was just blinding them, walking through them, doing whatever it is that he will. Binding Satan with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost, with the power. This time, he was not a mumbling word was being spoken. And they had never seen him being spit on and slapped or anything like that. What is he going to do? I hope he does something. That's what they were hoping. Mm -hmm. But Jesus didn't do nothing. And this is what it, the effect that it had on verse 66. Go ahead, sir. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Uh -huh. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. Mm -hmm. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. Oh, he was, uh, he was unstable. Go ahead, sir. And a maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, uh -huh. for thou art a Galilean, uh -huh. and thy speech agrees uh -huh. there too. So Peter, you know, had been had adopted the caricature of Jesus, speaking like him, you know. But then, but what did he do? But he began to curse and to swear, saying, "I know not this man of whom you so speak." He began to use profanity to separate himself from anything that might appear to be godly. This is how much. Him witnessing Jesus being beat up and, and slapped and spit on had an effect on his faith. He wasn't bold here. Mm -mm. I'll never deny you, Lord. Is that what he said? Yes. Continue, sir. And the second time the cock crew. Uh -huh. And Peter called to man the words that Jesus said unto him. Uh -huh. Before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought they on, he wept. Ain't that something? He went crying. Mm -hmm. He was, it was a, that was a painful thing for him, I would imagine. Yeah. A very painful for him. Let's go to Ephesians, the, uh, set, uh, uh, first chapter, pick it up verse seven. Cause Peter lacked faith there, but he, you saw that after he had been doing with that power from on high though, he was speaking boldly. Mm -hmm. Didn't care. In fact, when they would get beaten and, and thrown in jail, they would come out singing and stuff. They would count it all joy. That's a different mindset. Man, you know, we got beat today. Look at my cut, man, on my back. Look at your, look at yours, man. Yeah, man. Well, let's go and do it tomorrow. Wow. Different mindset. Mm -hmm. Appointed to death. Not caring for their life. They're all they love was the gospel. You must have a, a, the power and the mind of God in order to do that. What did I say? Ephesians 1, verse 17, sir. When you get there, read it, sir. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ... The Father of glory uh -huh. may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Uh -huh. The spirit is again. What's that spirit of wisdom, right? Is that the same thing that lighted upon Jesus, right? Spirit of wisdom. The God of all mercy may give us the spirit of wisdom. Go ahead, sir. And revelation in the knowledge of him. And to reveal stuff. Because this is what the Holy Ghost does. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The, uh, go ahead. That ye may know what is the, what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And that's something, so there's a spirit of knowledge, there's a spirit of, 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 of uh, understanding, there is a spirit of 
uh, so that you, uh, that so that you will understand what God is doing. For what purpose? Continue, sir. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe? Uh, to what? So that power is only to what those who believe. Go ahead, sir. According to the working of His mighty power. Uh, go, uh, go ahead, sir. Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly place. So we, the, which he wrought in Christ, who is sitting on the right hand of the Father, but he is working through us, even though he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. We're going to show you that. Continue, sir. Far above all principality uh -huh. and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Go ahead, sir. And had put all things under his feet uh -huh. and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which, which is us, the church. Mm -hmm. And it's going to tell you what the church is. Go ahead, sir. Which is his body. So which is his body. So we're talking about a unification. So all of these things that are uh, uh, residuals of the Holy Ghost are given so that it can unify the body. Continue, sir. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. The fullness of him that filleth what? All in all. We are one. That's how come it is the power of God that we exercise. It's not our power, but it is the might of God that we exercise. It is God's wisdom. It is God's understanding. Let us continue. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, read, sir. I therefore... The prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the the vocation wherewith ye are called. So we are prisoners. He's telling these Ephesians. He said, "I'm a prisoner. You are about to become prisoners." Go ahead, sir. With all lowliness. So now we need you to walk, but we need you to walk with all lowliness. Go ahead. And meekness. And meekness. With long suffering. With long suffering. Forbearing one another Forbearing in love. Forbearing one another in love. These are some attributes that appear. Uh, to be weak in a world that we see today. Some people equate weakness uh, with humility, when actually it is the power of God. Go ahead, sir. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of so, peace. Again, the unity of the what? Spirit. In the, why? Because we are all one in the bond of peace. Endeavoring. That is your goal. That is your main directive and objective. Go ahead, sir. There is one body. We know that body is the church, though. Which represents the fullness of, of, of Christ. Go ahead, sir. And one spirit. One spirit. Go ahead. Even as ye are called in one hope of your call. Go ahead, sir. One Lord. Uh-huh. One faith. Uh-huh. One baptism. There are no denominations in this Bible, people. There's one Lord. There's one belief. Either you believe it or you don't. And one baptism. And through that baptism, you are able to receive the revelations of God manifested within you so that you can do the works of God. And what are the works of God? To save the world. That's the only work that he was sent to do. Go ahead, sir. One God and Father of all, uh -huh. who is above all and through all and in you all. That is a universal God. Go ahead, sir. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we see unto every one is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So everybody differs when it comes to what is given to them. Everybody can't do everything. Some people want to do things that they're not able to do. Because when he gave out those talents, he said he gave those talents according to every man's several ability. I may want to do something, but I'm not able to do it, right? Come stand. Continue, sir. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto well, me. Let's take a look at these gifts. Continue, sir. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Go ahead. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. We're still talking about filling all things. We're going to take a look at these gifts. What are these gifts? Go ahead. And he gave some apostles. So now, we're looking at the gifts that he left, but we're looking at the apostles. Go ahead. 
and some prophets. Prophets and some evangelists. Evangelists and some pastors and pastors teachers. Pastors and teachers. And for what purpose? Go ahead, sir. For the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. Go ahead. For the work of the ministry. It's all about the work, people, of the ministry. It's all about saving the world. Go ahead, sir. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Which is the fullness of Christ. Which we are. Go ahead, sir. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Until So our work is to be done until what? We all come unified. That is how come we have to love one another. Because we are one another. If we really understand it, and when we truly understand that we are attached to each other, then we can love in a perfect mindset. But as long as we separate ourselves, thinking that we're not unified, we will never get it. I don't care how much knowledge you get. If you don't get that one thing, that you are attached, and that you are your brother's keeper, and likewise, you don't get it. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, till we all come into the unity of faith. Go ahead. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, uh -huh. unto a perfect man, uh -huh. unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ. That is what we are laboring for. It's not here yet, but we're laboring for Matthew 8, verse 23. Matthew 8, verse 23. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. When you get that, sir... Would you read it, please? Matthew 8, and pick it up at verse 23. Go ahead, sir. And when he was entered into a ship, uh -huh. his disciples followed him. Uh -huh. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Go ahead. In so much that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Now, Jesus is asleep. Waves just jumping up and down. He's probably just snoring. They're looking at him like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, uh -huh. Lord, save us. We perish. <laughs> they woke him up. I'm sure he probably was a little irritated. In fact, he was, because he's going to tell you. Go ahead, sir. And he says unto them, Why are you fearful? Why are you scared? Go ahead. Oh, ye of little faith. Now, you've been walking around with me. You've been doing miracles. I've been giving you power to heal all manner of sickness and diseases. You have seen the power of God in you. But something that some little waves jump up and you are just fearful for your life. Go ahead, sir. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. Ain't that something? He arose. Go ahead. Read verse 27. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. They were astonished that he was able to control. What manner of man is this? But you know what? This power was supposed to be given to you too. Do you know that the Lord said he to put all things under your feet, right? Everything that he made. But of course, it's about faith. Your faith is not there. May God help your unbelief. Numbers 27, verse 15. Numbers 27, and please pick it up at verse 15, sir. When you get there, read it. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, go ahead, sir. which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So the people need a leader. The people do need a leader, and they need a leader with the Spirit of God. Go ahead, sir. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. Uh -huh. And set him before Eliezer the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him charge in their sight. Go ahead, sir. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. You know, he said, put some of your honor, not all your honor, but put some of the honor that what? That the children of Israel may be obedient. Continue, sir. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, uh -huh. who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. Uh -huh. See, the priest was the light of the people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in. Go ahead. Both he... And all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. Go ahead, sir. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua and set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him 
and gave him charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. That's something, so we see here that the transition of one leader uh, uh, over the people to another, the Spirit of God was given to Joshua, the same spirit that was on Moses, actually. Let's go someplace else. Let's go to Numbers 11, pick it up at verse 10. Numbers 11 and pick it up at verse 10. When you get there, would you read it, sir? Then Moses heard the people weep through, throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. So they were weeping because they were weeping with the, the uh, mixed multitude, actually, that, you know, uh, uh, had caused them to... To, to, to go into remission in their faith, weeping and crying as the Lord had delivered them. Would, uh, continue, sir. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not favor in thy, found favor in thy sight, uh -huh. that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? I want me? you to skip down, please, to verse 16, because this is what the Lord said to Moses. Go ahead and read, sir. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, uh -huh. and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, uh -huh. that they may stand there with thee. Uh -huh. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bearest it not thyself alone. So we see that that Holy Spirit is being given to 70 other people here mm -hmm. to do the exact same things, not to do a different thing. The directive is the same. But skip down, please, to verse 24, sir. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took of the spear that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spear rested upon them, they prophesied and did not see. You see that the same things are happening when you get that Holy Spirit. They prophesied and didn't stop. Continue. Verse 26, sir. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. Mm -hmm. And the spear rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the See, camp. See, it doesn't matter where you are when the Lord chooses you. Whether you're in the camp or whatever. That's how come. But let's see. Let's see what these, what these guys said. When you get there, read. Continue, sir. Verse and, and there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. Go ahead. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, uh -huh. would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, uh -huh. and that the Lord would put his spirit upon you them. You notice the humility and unselfishness of Moses when he said, Man, I wish everybody had the spirit. Mm -hmm. Moses, the same spirit that Paul has, has said, so that you don't think of men more as they are, because we're nothing. People, it's God that is everything. Everybody is nobody. And if you think that you're somebody, you are not. First Samuel, no, I'm sorry, Luke 9, and pick it up at verse 40, 49, because we're going to see the same thing here. Luke 9 and verse 49. When you get there, read, sir. Uh-huh, Luke 9, verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in that name, uh -huh. and we forbade him. Because he followed not with us. Now, this is the same thing that happened. We're looking at the same thing, right? Go ahead, sir. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Forbid him not. Forbid him not. For he that is not against us is for us. For he that is not against us is for us. Isn't that something? So we're looking at the same thing. Let's go a step further. Let's go to First Samuel 10 chapter and pick it up at the first verse. We're going to try to move kind of speedily here. First Samuel 10 verse 1. 1 Samuel 10 and verse 1. When you get there, would you read, sir? Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? This is the anointing of Saul. Mm -hmm. we we'll skip down now, please, to verse uh, 5, sir. After that, 
Thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, mm -hmm. and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Go ahead, sir. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Turned into another man. Go ahead, sir. And let it be, when these signs come unto thee, that thou do as an as the occasion serve thee, for God, God is with for thee. It is indicative now that God is with you because his spirit is on you. And Saul was prophesying with the prophets because the Lord ended up giving him another heart. If you continue reading, let's go to Acts, the fourth chapter, and pick it up verse 1. Acts 4, verse 1. When you get there, sir, would you read? And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, uh -huh. being grieved that they taught the people uh -huh. and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Go ahead, sir. And they laid hands on them and put them in, in hold until the next day, for it was now evening. So time. Peter and John got arrested. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. Oh, so, you know, 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. When you start preaching and 5,000 people join, you're doing some powerful preaching and some powerful conversion, especially in a time where this doctrine was very controversial. Mm -hmm. Continue, continue sir. Please uh, skip down to verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Uh-huh. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Imagine what he's doing. He's filled with the Holy Ghost now. Mm -hmm. Let's know what he's doing. Go ahead. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man, uh -huh. by what means he is made whole, uh -huh. be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, uh, uh, uh. whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you. Well, isn't that something? So he said, let me let it be known. But he's speaking it with boldness mm -hmm. now. This is the same Peter that ran. Mm -hmm. Okay? Different mindset now because he's filled with that Holy Ghost. Skip down, please, to verse uh, 13, sir. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. <laughs> they, 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 they perceived they, they noticed that. They recognized that these people were just common Men. Uh -huh. That's all they were. Go ahead, finish, sir. They marveled. They marveled at it because they knew, man, they converted 5,000 people. We know that these guys have not went to school. You know, mm -hmm. one guy's a fisherman, the other guy's a what? He's a, a, just a regular laborer? <laughs> Go ahead, sir. And they took knowledge of them uh -huh. that they had been with Jesus. Oh, this is a, well, yeah, they've been, with, they've been with that guy we killed, uh, you know, a few months, a month ago or so. Well, however long ago. Go ahead, sir. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing they against say it. say nothing against it. Go ahead, sir. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, uh -huh. they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to what these men? What shall we men? do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them ahead, is manifest to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem. Go ahead. And we cannot we deny can't it. We can't deny What are we going to do with them? Continue. But that it spread no further among the people, uh -huh. let us straightly threaten them. Let's threaten them. That they speak, that they speak <laughs> henceforth to no man in this Listen, name. Listen, we're going to beat them so bad that when we let them out, they will not speak this name no more. Go ahead, sir. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Just look what Peter said. Go ahead. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. You make it yet or you just your own opinion. But go ahead. But for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen Go ahead, sir. and heard. Go ahead, sir. So when they had further threatened That's them. That's fine. Just, they, we can't help but speak the things that we have. Peter wasn't scared of most. Skip down to 31. Skip down to verse 31 while you're there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the, the word, word of God, God with both. They spoke the word of God. We read that before, but let's go another place. Let's go to, uh, to Luke 21. I just want the 15th verse. Luke 21, verse 15. Luke 21, verse 15. When you get there, sir, would you read? Luke 21 and 15. Uh-huh. 
Just I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And this is what he will give you even until this day, a mouth uh, speaking wisdom that neither your adversaries can gainsay or resist. Acts the first chapter. Pick it up, verse uh, uh, 7, please. Acts the first chapter, because this is what he was telling them, and we read it in the beginning. We're going to read it again. Acts 1, verse 7. Go ahead, sir. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons uh -huh. which the Father has put in his own power. Go ahead, sir. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Go ahead, sir. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and, and unto the, the uttermost part of the earth. So now he was said, because before he just told them to stay around Jerusalem, don't go into the Gentiles now. Now, when they've been to do with this power on high, they are not only supposed to be just witnesses in Samaria and Judea, but into where the uttermost parts of the earth. And let's go to the last place, Mark 16 and verse 14. Mark 16 and verse 14. And would you read, sir? Afterward he appeared unto the, the eleven as they sat at meat. And so they all sitting at meat, go ahead, sir. And abraded them with their unbelief and, and hardness and, of heart. And abraded them because they didn't believe. Isn't that something? After all of it, they still didn't believe. But what did he say to them? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Is that something now? This is beyond just uh, 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 the, the, the lost sheep of Israel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ahead, sir. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Go ahead. But he that believeth not shall be dead. And you're not the judge. You just got to preach the gospel. You don't know who's going to believe. You don't know when they're going to believe. That's like how Paul was telling the Corinthians once again, don't judge a matter before the time. You just preach the gospel. Throw the seeds out there. Someone who is a straight up uh, 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 killer or whatever might be the straight up servant of the Lord next year. You don't know. Go ahead, sir. And these signs shall follow thee that believe. Now, them the that signs believe. are not going to follow you. You're not going to follow the signs. They're going to follow you, people. What? Go ahead, sir. In my name shall they cast this out devils. This is power from on high. Go ahead. They shall speak with new tongues. That is because you're going to be speaking with the wisdom and counsel and might and understanding and knowledge. Go ahead, sir. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And that's them. not talking about physical poison because, you know, you hear and you eat and drink by, by, by spiritually too. So when you even when you are hearing stuff, you'll be able to discern between what is garbage, what is poison, and what is not. Go ahead, sir. They shall lay hands on the sick. Go ahead, sir. They shall recover. And they shall. So this is the job of every servant of God. Continue, sir. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, uh -huh. he was received up into heaven uh -huh. and sat on the right hand he, of God. And that's where he is right now. Read it. Finish it. And they went and they went forth. So they went forth, which we are commanded to go forth. Go ahead, sir. And preached everywhere. And they preached everywhere, which we are commanded to do. Go ahead. The Lord working with them. And the them. Lord is working with us if we believe that he is. Go ahead. And confirming the word and with signs. And confirming the fire. word with the signs following. What is that? Amen. People being healed. Amen. May God have a, a blessing to the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the internet. Log into our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.